Did you know there was a time when not celebrating Guy Fawkes Night in England could make you a traitor? Quite a startling fact, isn't it? Let's delve into the fascinating origins of this now celebrated event. Our story begins in the early 17th century, a time of heightened religious tension in England. The throne was occupied by King James I, a Protestant, much to the chagrin of the country's Catholic population. Among these disgruntled Catholics was a man named Guy Fawkes, a soldier of considerable skill and, as it would turn out, extreme conviction. Fox and a group of like-minded individuals devised a plot that would come to be known as the Gunpowder Plot. Their objective was as audacious as it was treacherous. They planned to blow up the Houses of Parliament, an act intended to not only destabilize the government but also to assassinate King James himself. The plot was deeply rooted in the religious discord of the time. As Catholics, Fox and his associates were discontented with a Protestant king. They saw their plot as a necessary evil, a drastic measure to restore Catholic rule to the English throne. But their plan was not meant to be. The gunpowder plot was uncovered just in the nick of time, saving King James and the Houses of Parliament from a fiery destruction. The conspirators, including Fox, were arrested and subsequently executed for their treasonous intentions. The discovery of the plot sent shockwaves through English society. King James's survival was seen as divine intervention, a miracle to be celebrated for generations to come. This sentiment was so strong that it led to the creation of a law that would forever change how the English people commemorated this event. The plot therefore represented high treason, setting the stage for a law that would impact how this event was commemorated. Stay tuned as we delve into the observance of the 5th of November Act of 1605 in the next scene. In the wake of the failed gunpowder plot, Parliament took action. It was January, just a couple of months after Guy Fawkes and his gang's attempt to blow up the Houses of Parliament and assassinate King James I. The plot represented high treason, an audacious attempt to overthrow a Protestant king by a group of disgruntled Catholics. In response to this audacious act, Parliament decided to pass a law a law that would mark this failed plot forever in the annals of English history. This law was the observance of the 5th of November Act of 1605. Now this wasn't your average piece of legislation. This law mandated that every citizen of England should celebrate the failure of the gunpowder plot. Yes, you heard that right. Parliament essentially passed a law forcing everyone to throw a party, to jubilate over the foiling of Fox's plot. But why would Parliament pass such a law? Was it just an excuse for a national day of revelry? Far from it. This law had far-reaching implications. It was a powerful statement, a declaration of unity, an affirmation of the Protestant monarchy, and a stark warning to any potential traitors. The observance of the 5th of November Act of 1605 was a clear message to all those who might harbor treasonous thoughts. The crown was strong, the people were united, and any attempts to disrupt this unity would be met with severe consequences. Furthermore, the act made it clear that not celebrating the king's deliverance was in itself an act of treason. If you weren't partaking in the festivities, if you weren't expressing your unfeigned thankfulness for the king's safety, then you were a traitor too. You see, the 5th of November wasn't just a day of celebration, it was a day of loyalty, a day of allegiance, a day to reaffirm one's commitment to the crown and the Protestant rule. The act's purpose wasn't just to commemorate the failure of the gunpowder plot, but to ensure that the people remembered their duty to the monarch, that they understood the importance of unity and loyalty. And so, every 5th of November, the people of England would gather. They would light bonfires, they would celebrate, they would remember the gunpowder plot and express their gratitude for its failure. They would reiterate their loyalty to the king and the Protestant monarchy, and in doing so, they would strengthen the bonds that held them together as a nation. This law ensured that the king's deliverance would be celebrated with unfeigned thankfulness for all ages to come. Even though the act was repealed in 1859, the tradition of celebrating Guy Fawkes Night continues to this day, a testament to the enduring influence of this seemingly peculiar piece of legislation. Despite the repeal of the Observance Act, the celebration of Guy Fawkes Night continues. Indeed, over the centuries, the memory of the failed gunpowder plot has endured, transforming into a nationwide celebration marked by bonfires, fireworks, and festivities. The Observance Act may have officially ceased in 1859 but the spirit of the law, the spirit of celebration, remains undeterred. What began as a state-mandated Thanksgiving has evolved into an annual tradition, a night ablaze with the crackling of bonfires and the sparkle of fireworks lighting up the November sky. 
Traditions associated with Guy Fawkes Night have their roots in the plot's aftermath. Bonfires for instance were originally lit to symbolize the burning of effigies, a representation of Guy Fawkes himself. Today these roaring fires serve as gathering points for communities, lighting up the night in a spectacle of warmth and unity. Fireworks too are a hallmark of this celebration. Their brilliant displays bursting against the dark canvas of the night are a vivid reminder of the explosive plot that was foiled. These pyrotechnic displays coupled with the glow of bonfires transform the night into a tableau of light and sound, a spectacle that captures the collective imagination of the nation year after year. On this night the air is thick with the scent of burning wood and the echo of fireworks. The atmosphere is one of camaraderie and shared history, as people gather to commemorate an event that has shaped their cultural identity. And let's not forget the food. From toffee apples to parkin cake, traditional Guy Fawkes night treats add a sweet note to the festivities, bringing families and friends together over shared meals and laughter. Even though the law no longer mandates these celebrations, they remain a significant part of British culture. Guy Fawkes Night, now removed from its original political and religious context, serves as a testament to the enduring power of tradition and collective memory in shaping a nation's cultural landscape. Guy Fawkes Night, a celebration born out of political and religious tensions, has become a part of British cultural identity. This evolution from a legally enforced observance to a voluntary tradition is as fascinating as it is enlightening. Originally, Guy Fawkes Night was a mandate, an obligation. The observance of 5th November Act of 1605 was a clear command from the government, celebrate or be labeled a traitor. Such a law emerged from a period of deep-seated religious discord and political instability. It was a time when the line between loyalty and treachery was drawn with the ink of religious allegiance. Yet over time, the law was repealed. The once obligatory celebration was no longer a matter of legal requirement. But did the celebration cease? Far from it. Guy Fawkes Night continued to be observed, morphing instead into a voluntary tradition upheld by the people. This transition signifies a profound shift in societal attitudes and values. It reflects the evolution of freedom of expression, the right to choose, and the power of cultural identity. The shift from mandate to choice represents a broader transformation within society. It's a transition from a time when religious identity was controlled and regulated, to a time when it is a personal choice. It's a shift from a society where dissent was punished, to one where it is a right. The evolution of Guy Fawkes Night is a testament to these changes, a symbol of the journey from oppression to freedom. Today, Guy Fawkes Night is a vibrant part of British cultural identity. It's a night of bonfires and fireworks, of history remembered and shared. It's a celebration that transcends its dark origins, becoming a beacon of unity and shared history. It's a night that reflects the resilience of a nation, and the enduring power of its culture. Whether mandated by law or celebrated by choice, Guy Fawkes Night serves as a reminder of a pivotal moment in English history. So, what have we learned today? We've delved deep into the murky waters of the gunpowder plot, where Guy Fawkes and his Catholic conspirators attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament and assassinate King James I. Their motive? To replace the Protestant king with a Catholic ruler. This plot of high treason led to Parliament passing the observance of the 5th of November Act, 1605. This law demanded the people of England celebrate the plot's failure with unfeigned thankfulness, turning any dissenters into traitors. Fast forward to 1859, this act was repealed, but the celebration of Guy Fawkes Night continued. It evolved from a mandatory observance into a national celebration complete with bonfires and fireworks. From an act of treason to a national celebration, Guy Fawkes Night tells a fascinating story of political intrigue, religious conflict, and cultural evolution.